The subject of this video is Forster Resonance Energy Transfer, or FRET. We've also referred to it kind of in a more old-fashioned way as the Coulombic Mechanism for Energy Transfer. And it's called Coulombic because it relies on electrical dipole moments and the transfer of the energy associated with an oscillating dipole, which happens when a molecule is excited, to another molecule. FRET is used in a wide variety of places for a variety of applications. And this is because of its, what I would describe as exquisite dependence on distance. It doesn't have quite as strong a distance dependence as dexter energy transfer, so we can distinguish it from dexter energy transfer in that way. And it can be used to measure distances that are highly convenient on a molecular scale. And we saw this, for example, in our introduction energy transfer, where FRET is applied to measure distances inside proteins and in biochemical systems where molecules are moving farther apart or closer together. We can observe that in real time by looking at the efficiency and extent of FRET. The core concept behind FRET is the idea that photoexcitation induces an oscillating dipole in the excited molecule. And this is associated with the transition dipole moment for the energy donor. A molecule in the vicinity can feel the oscillating electric field associated with D star's oscillating dipole. And this can induce a dipole moment in the energy acceptor. You know, this, this reminds me of dipole-induced dipole interactions uh, from intermolecular forces that you may have seen in general chemistry. It's a very similar idea. It's just that the dipole is now oscillating because of the photo excitation. In hearing the term oscillating electric field, you may get the impression that D star emits a photon. It doesn't. That would be trivial energy transfer. This is something different, and this can be distinguished from trivial energy transfer experimentally. The electric field we might call is a virtual photon. It is an oscillating electric field, but a discrete photon is not emitted. There's just an electrical interaction or coulombic interaction happening between D star and A. Actual energy tra transfer takes place when D settles back into its ground state, kind of a non-oscillating state, and A starts oscillating. And A now has a transition dipole moment. A star is then generated. So we've seen that the oscillating dipole in D star induces an oscillating dipole in A, creating the excited state A star. In order for this to make sense from a conservation of energy perspective, the change in energy associated with the relaxation of D star back to D has to equal the change in energy associated with the excitation of A to A star. So we need a common energy state. This relates to the idea of spectral overlap that we saw previously. D and A need common energy states such that energy transfer can happen with no overall change in energy when D star goes to D and A goes to A star. I don't want to get too in the weeds of Forster resonance energy transfer theory, but the results of Forster theory are very important to understand the applications of FRET. Very long story, very short. We can combine the classical theory of interacting electrical dipoles, something that Coulomb perhaps would have even understood, with the idea of transition dipole moment associated with excitation, and there is a transition dipole moment for the acceptor mu A and a transition dipole moment for the acceptor mu D, this should say, not mu B. Combining the classical theory of interacting dipoles with these dipole moments shows how the rate of fret depends on distance and the nature of the spectra of the donor and acceptor. The basic relation is that the rate of energy transfer is related to the square of each of the transition dipole moments divided by the distance between the donor and acceptor to the sixth power. And so while the sixth power may seem large, recall that for dexter energy transfer, this was an inverse exponential dependence on distance. So there is a point where FRET becomes a faster energy transfer mechanism than dexter energy transfer at some distance between DNA. We'll come back to this point a little bit later. We can combine this relation with relations between the transition dipole moment, the radiative rate of the donor, the rate of photon emission of the donor, and the integrated absorptivity of the acceptor, basically the area under the curve of its absorption spectrum, to transform this equation into a more useful form. The second version says that the rate of energy transfer is related to the radiative rate 
of the donor, how rapidly it emits a photon plays into this, the area under the curve for the absorption spectrum of the energy acceptor, and again still divided by this distance dependence to the sixth power. In essence, what we've done here is replace these transition dipole moment terms, which are a little bit abstract, with terms that are a little more concrete that we can get from, for example, the absorption spectrum of the acceptor and studies of the radiative lifetime of the donor. But because the spectrum must overlap, it's not the entire absorption spectrum that matters for Forster resonance energy transfer. It's only the region of overlap, which is captured in this spectral overlap integral. And unlike Dexter energy transfer, where we normalized with respect to the absorption coefficient, we do not normalize here with respect to the absorption coefficient of the acceptor. In other words, how much the acceptor absorbs now matters profoundly. Additionally, the orientation of the dipoles matters for the efficiency of forced resonance energy transfer. They need to be aligned to promote a transition in the acceptor molecule. And this dipole orientation factor captures the chances of the dipoles being aligned based on the structures of the molecules involved. And that's going to depend on the particular energy donor and acceptor involved. For our purposes, the most important term here by far is this r to the negative sixth power, or 1 over r to the sixth. 1 over the distance between the donor and acceptor to the sixth power captures the distance dependence of FRET. And again, while r to the sixth may seem like a large number, decreasing the rate of energy transfer very rapidly as DNA move apart, this is actually not as bad as it seems when compared to dexter energy transfer, where the dependence is an inverse exponential that falls to zero extremely rapidly as the molecules move apart. And in fact, and we'll show this point graphically in a second, a key difference between FRET and Dexter energy transfer is that no collision is required. And you can test this yourself. When D and A are separated by a distance that is greater than their van der Waals radii, the rate of Coulombic energy transfer, or FRET, is still quite large, and indeed can be much larger than the rate of Dexter energy transfer. So from this equation, we can develop some qualitative ideas about when FRET is rapid. The first concerns the spectral overlap integral, j. The rate of FRET is greatest when this number is large, large overlap integral, large spectral overlap between the emission of the donor and absorption of the acceptor. This essentially captures the idea that there is a large probability of energy transfer from d star to a when the spectra overlap to a large degree. FRET is rapid when the radiative rate of D is large. This is associated with the large transition dipole moment, which again has a higher chance of transferring energy to the acceptor than a lower dipole moment or a slower radiative rate. When the absorptivity of A is large, and again this plays into the spectral overlap integral as well, strong absorption of A indicates a high likelihood of being excited by D star. And of course, just as with dexter energy transfer, the closer d star and a are in space, the smaller r d a is, and the larger the rate of energy transfer. Very commonly, when we get outside of the core, you know, messy physical chemistry literature, we think about forced resonance energy transfer in terms of a critical separation, r0. And this is the distance at which FRET is 50% efficient. One way to think about this situation is d star is confronted with a choice and its choice is to transfer its energy to A via FRET. This is going to result in D in its ground state and the generation of A star. Alternatively, D can undergo relaxation back to its ground state through emission of a photon or not, through some kind of intramolecular radiative or non-radiative decay. There is some distance between D and A at which the probability of energy transfer is 50%, and the probability of decay back to the ground state intramolecular or unimolecular decay is 50%. That critical distance is R0. When we define R0 in this way, we can alter this equation to a form that is much simpler. The rate of energy transfer is proportional to the rate constant for deactivation of D, which is equivalent to 1 over the lifetime of D, times R0, the critical separation distance, divided by R to the sixth power. 
And given our kinetic scheme, we can see how this equation reduces to this condition that R0 is the 50-50 point by noting that KD is the rate constant for moving to the left from D star to D unimolecularly, and KET is the rate constant for moving to the right, energy transfer to A. When R0 equals R, this term reduces to 1, and the rate constant of energy transfer is equal to the rate constant of unimolecular decay of D back to the ground state, and so we have a 50-50 probability of doing one or the other because their rate constants are equal. In the biochemistry literature and other places where FRET is applied, this equation is commonly used to model the distance dependence of the rate constant of energy transfer. Finally, let's compare exchange energy transfer and FRET. And we'll compare and contrast here. We'll note some similarities and some key differences. The main difference is on the effect of the distance between the donor and acceptor on the rate constant of energy transfer. Differences in the oscillator strengths associated with the D, D star, and A, A star transitions also have a differential impact on exchange energy transfer versus FRET. The main point of comparison, the main way in which they are similar, is that spectral overlap is still required, and this was a key condition of energy transfer that we noted way back in the introduction to this topic. So the distance dependence is summed up really in this box. The rate of fret decreases as r to the negative sixth, while the rate of exchange energy transfer decreases as e to the negative 2r. To get a feel for the implications of this, it helps to plot the rate constant as a function of distance for these two mechanisms. More specifically, what we're going to plot is the ratio of the rate constant of energy transfer to the rate constant of unimolecular deactivation for the two mechanisms. So we're going to end up with two graphs. The zero point here is the point at which, it's the 50-50 point, right? The point at which the rate constant of energy transfer and the rate constant of unimolecular decay to the ground state are equal. That will happen at the critical distance for FRET, as we've just seen. And let's now lay down two curves for the different possible mechanisms. So st let's start with FRET, since we saw that most recently. For FRET, from our previous equation relating the rate constant of energy transfer to the distance between D and A, we can write this relation. The natural log of this ratio of rate constants is proportional to 6 times the natural log of RDA. And this comes from the 1 over RDA to the 6th dependence of the rate constant on distance. If we plot this, we'll see that it has a curved appearance because of the natural log that appears here. The natural log of RDA is essentially the, the function we're plotting. And it's negative sloping, of course, because the farther we move out, the slower the rate becomes. So here roughly is the curve for Coulombic energy transfer. Now let's look at the situation for dexter or exchange energy transfer. If we again think about what the natural log of this ratio of rate constants would be equal to, for dexter, energy transfer. The natural log of this ratio is now proportional to 2 times the distance between D and A. No natural log. This is a linear relationship. And again, a downward sloping line since the rate decreases now very rapidly as D and A move apart from one another. So something like this. And of course, there will be a point at which the two curves intersect just based on these equations. Let's draw this point here. It generally will not happen at the zero point. That's just a coincidence that it happens to be that close. And what we can see at this point is that for very short distances, exchange energy transfer is faster than fret. At very short distances where the molecules are in contact, exchange energy transfer is faster. But for the vast majority of distances, once we get out this way, fret is faster. And fret still has a non-negligible rate, even when we get out to very long distances. The fact that the rate of fret energy transfer is non-negligible, even at these very large distances, 20, 30, 40 angstroms and beyond, between the donor and acceptor, is what applications of fret take advantage of for measuring distances. We have the ability to detect, for example, the difference between this point and this point, or really even met much, much smaller differences in distance as a result of differential fret responses between donors and acceptors at different distances, which I think is pretty cool. Now, one last thing that's worth mentioning about the Coulombic versus the exchange mechanisms concerns oscillator strengths. Remember, these are related to the transition dipole moment for the transition, how strong or how likely the transition is relative to a classical harmonic oscillator, etc. The Coulombic mechanism depends on oscillator strengths, and intuitively this should make sense since it's all about oscillating dipoles. 
and the oscillator strengths of both transitions, d star to d and a to a star, are involved. The exchange mechanism does not depend on oscillator strengths, since fundamentally its mechanism pertains to electron exchange rather than oscillating dipoles.